Hello, and welcome. I am Exit Light, and this is my channel. Today I'm going to be narrating part three of Tabitha. The series is written by the very talented Kellahawk One in collaboration with Sid's Supersidious Creepypastas. If you would like to start from the very beginning, that story is Giggle, and I will put the link in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Then there is Tabitha Part 1 and Tabitha Part 2, and then please come right back here and listen to Tabitha Part 3. All right, let's begin. Tabitha Part 3, narrated by Exit Light, written by Killahawk One. Through the night, the servants of the four horsemen continued their assault on the hidden house within the mill. They gouged and scratched the magical barrier that blocked their way. The spells of protection were powerful, but the servants were relentless, and eventually it weakened, and they slowly pressed their body through the barrier. Arms and heads began to emerge from the walls. They grabbed and reached viciously, sometimes shooting sharp projectiles in all directions. Jagged branches of light cut through the air from Marissa's wand. It severed heads, limbs, and appendages from her attackers. Buddy was perched above high and concentrated on his task. It was hard work, but he was still a deadly foe and did not neglect the fight below. He kept watch over the woman carefully, and if danger arose, he would leap down, grab the approaching monster by the head, and with a quick snap, break its neck. Marissa feverishly expelled the invaders and worked to patch the holes in the invisible mystical barrier. But it was apparent. It was a losing battle. She yelled over her shoulder, Buddy, we need to leave! Buddy let out a barrage of frustrated laughs and giggles. Tabitha translated, He says the two mysticals are too powerful. They keep blocking him from every direction. An idea came to Marissa and she said, Well, then I shall have a word or two with the two gentlemen, I think. Marissa ran full speed towards the front of the house. Tabitha's short and lethal bolts cut through anything that threatened her mother. As Marissa approached the wall, an opening manifested. With a flick of her wrist, her dagger elongated into a bow. She dropped to her knees and slid to a stop. Marissa brought her hand up to the bowstring of light, then emerged and pulled back hard and released two glowing arrows. They streaked across the dark sky with speed and precision. The two priests were knocked off their feet as each arrow penetrated their skull with a mighty force fueled by a mother's desperation and love. Marissa crouched on her knees and screamed, Now, buddy, now! Buddy raised his arms in the air, and a brilliant sphere of light exploded into existence in the center of the room. Marissa beckoned for Tabitha to come to her. As they approached the doorway, it suddenly vanished. Marissa turned, and Tabitha screamed as she saw Buddy fall to his knees. From behind, two long segmented tails had impaled the demon. The long, black stingers protruded from his lower abdomen and neck. With Tabitha at her back, she rushed over to their fallen comrade. The power spilling out of her wand disintegrated the two enemies instantly. Marissa lifted her head as loud cracks began to echo across the room, signaling that the protective barriers were about to fall. She looked down at the injured demon and she wept for the poor beast. Buddy's kind was resilient and hard to kill, but his injury seemed too severe to survive. She lifted his head and said, Buddy, Buddy, please help us. Please. We are running out of time. The cracks and shattering grew louder with each passing moment. The spells of concealment were fading and the actual appearance of the old and rotten walls of the mill appeared. The demon coughed violently, 
spraying the floor with blood. It lifted itself up with one hand and raised the other. It made circular motions with its wrist, and slowly the door of light opened. Marissa shouted, Tabitha, go! Go! What about Buddy? She screamed. We aren't going anywhere without him, sweetheart, she yelled as she stood and released a fury of lightning bolts from the tip of her wand that incinerated the approaching monsters. She looked down at her dagger and whispered, Goodbye, my old friend, and threw the blade into the air. She spoke the words, Inferno, te," and it ignited with a brilliant green flame. It spun in the air, encircling herself, Buddy, and the doorway. The blade sliced deep into the ground, producing a wall of fire that separated them from the approaching monsters. Marissa looked all around her at the faces barely visible through the wall of flames, separating her from the horde of nightmares spitting and thrashing on the other side. She breathed a sigh of relief at seeing the silhouette of Tabitha safely crouched beyond the doorway. With all of her strength, she lifted Buddy from behind, under his arms, and dragged him through the door as quickly as possible. When his legs were past the threshold of the opening, she shouted, Now, Buddy! Now! The demon weakly dropped its hand in the passageway began to collapse upon itself. As the doorway of light quickly dissipated, Marissa looked up and saw a burning, segmented appendage emerge from the fire. At the last moment, it thrust its ebony stinger through the opening and impaled Marissa through her chest. The woman flew across the dark space and landed hard on the ground. She laid there motionless, with eyes open, staring into the darkness. Marissa opened her eyes to the familiar cavern. However, instead of darkness, she was met with a comforting glow of flames all throughout the walls. The beautiful obelisks stood tall and proud before her, and in the distance, she had her first clear view of the temple that the three towers guarded. Welcome, my child, a beautiful voice spoke. I have been waiting for this moment for such a long time, my dear. Marissa turned her head and saw the beautiful woman dressed in white. The woman was kneeling next to her and smiling. Marissa quietly inquired, Who are you? Oh, she said, I have gone by many names in my time. I am the prophetess to the one that's been hidden in time. I work in secret, protecting my children until the day of prophecy comes, a day that soon approaches, a day when the immovable object will collide with the unstoppable force. Tabitha, Marissa whispered, No, my dearest child, said the woman in white, you. The woman continued, There are forces in the universe that hold vast power, and together they form a force no barrier or wall can circumvent, except for one thing, a mother's love. It is the one kind of love that is immovable. When the two collide, neither will relent. But one must die. I am afraid, my dear. That is also you. Tears began to flow from Marissa's face. 
What about Tabitha? She can't be left alone. They will find her and kill her. The woman's eyes brightened and her smile broadened. Do not despair, little one. This is how it must be. For in your death comes sacrifice. Sacrifice for love holds power beyond the comprehension of those that sought to possess your child. The woman sat next to Marissa and made herself comfortable. Let me tell you a story, dearest one. Long ago, there was only the Trinity, not the one spoken of in today's religions, but the original triad. It was from their lips that existence came to be. Very few know the real story of creation devoid of myth and fairy tales. The world came into existence from the will of the three furies, God, Satan, and alongside them there existed a third essence, the mother. It was she who kept balance between good and evil. It was from her bosom that the gift of life was given to the first daughter so long ago. Eventually, she was betrayed and suppressed by the other two, for jealousy and oppression dominate their nature. They erased the very existence of the mother from the knowledge of humanity and reduced her children to one of servitude. Their conflict has raged from the beginning. But rejoice, for their enslavement of the mother's daughters has come to an end. Marissa shook her head and said, I don't understand what all this means. The woman looked at Marissa affectionately. Yes, my dear. I didn't expect you to, nor are you meant to understand all that comes to pass. However, this you must know. This is a place of sanctuary that was hidden away. It is a place that can only be accessed by sacrifice. This place was set aside for the daughters of the mother to grow and flourish under my protection. Through your sacrifice, Tabitha has gained entry. Here, she too will grow and thrive. She will be taught all she needs to know in safety. She will learn her purpose in the world. And when the time comes, she will be ready to fulfill her deeds that were prophesied so long ago. The woman stood tall and said, Now, you have one more thing to do. She took Marissa's hand and placed a small red rose in her palm. Give this to your daughter. It will guide her to this place. Marissa began to cry and shout, No, no, I won't leave her. She needs me. I need her. The woman looked affectionately at Marissa and said, My dearest child, you have very little time. Do not waste it on emotional outbursts. Use this time to give your daughter the wisdom she needs. You must let her go. But as you leave, remind her who she is and what she can do. With that, darkness fell, and Marissa 
saw no more. Marissa opened her eyes to an explosion of pain. She coughed out the blood pooling in her chest as she lay on the cold ground. All she could make of her surroundings was a dark, gray mist all around. To her left, Buddy laid on the ground with his back towards her, breathing heavily. She surmised that they were still within the pocket, but due to his condition, they were unable to connect to another pocket, allowing them to exit to safety. They were trapped. Tabitha knelt at her side, with her head buried in Marissa's arms. Tabitha, Marissa weakly said. Mommy, you're bleeding, Tabitha said through her tears. Tabitha, listen to me. I want you to go. There is a place that I found for you that is so beautiful. You won't believe your eyes. I want you to go there and live your life. Go there and grow up to be the beautiful and powerful woman you were meant to become. Mommy, I can't leave you, cried Tabitha. Tabitha, Marissa said, listen to me. We don't have much time. I want you to leave this place. Leave this place at once. And if anyone gets in your way, I want you to kill them. Do you understand me? I want you to kill them. You do whatever it takes for you to get someplace safe. Marissa weakly reached up to touch her daughter's face and said, I want you to make them pay for what they did to us. Kill them all. Let go of your fear, baby. Let it go and make it so that they can never do this to another person ever again. You let them know who you are and what you can do. You send a message to heaven and hell that you are coming for them. Can you do that for me? Can you do that for mommy? Tabitha nodded through her tears. Marissa took hold of Tabitha's hand, and a red light illuminated the child's skin. It ran down her forearm, forming an intricate map that tattooed on her inner arm. Marissa weakly said, Here, take this. It will show you the way. You will be safe there, I promise. Tabitha continued to weep. Mommy, I won't leave you. Marissa looked into her daughter's eyes one last time and said, Oh, Tabitha, I love you. With that, Marissa, daughter of Evelyn, which to the coven of the Eastern tribe, closed her eyes and felt no more pain. Thank you for listening. Please stay tuned for part four of Tabitha.